just wondering if maybe Santa Claus is going to bring us lots and lots of toys this year. Toys? Ha! Ho, ho, ho! There's a lot we can learn from bad Christmas movies. Not just the little things, like what kind of presents children could look forward to in the old days. Look, a toy coal mine. But important stuff too. Don't trust snowmen, Cousin Eddie can't swim, turtles like reggae, and so on. Take the holes with pepperoni, fa la 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 And did you know Dean Cain was the real patron saint of Christmas? I'm full of surprises. <laughs> oh, is that what you're full of? <laughs> Dean Cain's one Yuletide tradition that won't appear on this list of the best worst Christmas films ever made, because we're looking for the entertainingly bad. <laughs> that means no dogs in Santa hats, no straight white people falling in love wearing red and green sweaters. There are a lot of these. And definitely no Krampus the Christmas Devil. You sniveling little shit! I should kill you myself! Instead we're going to be scared, confused and enlightened. Now see Christmas through new eyes. In Kurt Cameron's Saving Christmas, the passive-aggressive born-again former actor attempts to justify his favourite season's cynical commercialism by claiming it's what God intended. This is doing what God does. He has always been giving gifts to his children at the base of trees. He has to say this because the materialistic traditions are the only ones he seems to care about. I love the cookies. I love the fire, I, I love the presents, the stockings, the tree, the fudge, the lights. It's a great time for growing out the winter beard. Cameron's brother-in-law or cousin or something, Christian, disagrees, believing Christmas is actually about Jesus rather than Santa, which seems like a reasonable view until you hear the justification. S-A-N-T-A, -A. rearrange the letters, Satan. Santa, Satan, same letters. He's finally convinced when Cameron's deranged revisionism contorts Father Christmas into a brooding, skull-cracking, badass bishop. I just want to be normal. No one is normal. There are dozens of Christmas slashes, and many would make worthwhile entries, but there isn't enough room for all of them, and even Santa Claus has had to make way. I'm not Wayne! I'm Santa Claus! To all a good night edges most thanks to its broad appeal and classic setup, which sees a bunch of girls spending Christmas holidays at a finishing school with the peculiar ability to render its inhabitants blurry and horny. But which of those blurry, horny inhabitants is the killer Santa? The boring one? I was just on my way to get some milk. Mm. The English one, whose accent even I find funny. Oh, well, we're just going to sit here till we start laying eggs. Or maybe it's the crazy groundskeeper. <coughs> nope. Merry Christmas, Nicole. Most Christmas cartoons belong at the bottom of the bad movie barrel, alongside foreign E.T. ripoffs. And Rap City Street Kids' Believe in Santa is worse than most. Whoa! But it's more watchable than similar CG nightmares like The Christmas Light, because it doesn't make you want to drink bleach. Ain't no way, there ain't no way. There ain't no way. Despite the early 90s animation, it was actually released in 2002, so after Shrek, Ice Age and Monsters Inc. But at least it has animation. The people behind Santa's elf named Calvin forgot about it. Do you understand, Calvin? You're fired! More importantly, there's no plot to worry about with Rap City Street Kids and it's only 40 minutes long. You always know just what to say. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> that was weird. Feeders 2 Sleigh Bells is one of the better known offerings from cult Pennsylvania VHS movie makers the Polonia Brothers, whose filmography either amounts to outsider art or a hate crime against cinema. <laughs> The plot has Santa saving humanity from an invasion of bulb-headed aliens, but our job as viewers isn't so much to follow what's happening as marvel at it. I think you've been drinking too much eggnog. 
For example, this scene culminates in a lady finding her pet cat dead, but a stuffed animal was apparently too much for the Polonias, so they just used a photo with red paint on the edge. Rest assured, it all ends well. Something the girls have been working on for next Christmas. All Jesse wants for Christmas is for his murdered father not to be murdered, and he has a plan. Jesse's trying to get his black belt in karate by Christmas Day. He thinks it will bring his father back. It might. What initially looks like a depressing drag begins its journey to Christmas classic when we learn the father was murdered by a clown. A clown? And it isn't meant to be funny. You're absolutely right. But then Nora's the psychic who helps Jesse's mother. That's why I'm sensing clowns. This unbelievably lazy digital blancmange clearly borrows footage from another movie in order to add names like Eric Roberts to the cast. And there's no attempt to integrate it in a way that makes sense. There's a scary man on a screen. I didn't know what he was talking about. Then there is a clown with a gun. Ultimately, little Jesse breaks the breadboard that wins him his black belt, and it does indeed bring his father back to life. Not all Christploitation is as aggressively stupid as Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas. What are they going to do next? Tell us hot chocolate's bad for us? In Last Ounce of Courage, Marshall Artigue plays the spectacular Bob Revere. You know, I always saw myself as a patriot. A small town mayor who sparks a constitutional kerfuffle when he tries to involve Christ in Christmas. Today, Christmas is all about Santa Claus and buying things. I love the presents. I love the stockings. As you'd expect, it seems determined to tell us how Christianity has been banned by communist Democrats, and that being caught in possession of a Bible at school is now a criminal offense. I spoke with the school's attorney informally, and he suggested that we all keep this as low-key as possible. But it ultimately blames the secularization of Christmas on weak rather than malevolent officials, making it an issue of personal freedom that Bob takes very seriously. And I love my country, and I love being free. It's a strange movie, surprisingly honest and likable, but fortunately still full of Christianity under threat propaganda. I've been doing some serious research, and the real Christmas story, shepherds find the baby king, not aliens. Really? It is the beginning of the end. There's no turning back now. Welcome to Tales of the Third Dimension. Tales of the Third Dimension is a portmanteau horror movie that couldn't be less remarkable for the first hour, but comes alive in the final segment when holidaying parents leave an increasingly senile granny in charge of the kids at Christmas. Oh, me and Grandpa. Once the old lady finally snaps. Grandma just may have to punish little Dennis. We're treated to a ferociously madcap game of cat and mouse as she wheels around the house blasting away at the children with her shotgun, accompanied by jingle bells. It's an amazing sequence and ends with Granny cornering the little ones with a hedge trimmer. But fortunately, someone's watching out for them. I've spoiled half the endings so far, so I may as well do this one too. René Cardona's Santa Claus is a freewheeling Mexican fever dream in which Father Christmas does battle with a demon named Pitch. Santa will jump down using his magic parasol. Old Pitch hadn't counted on this. He's... Given this Santa sneaks into children's bedrooms and drugs them with sleeping powder so they won't remember what he's done, I'd take my chances with Pitch. I know all those toys don't make you happy, 
but I'll do something for you that I only do for children who are very good. Christmas themed family freak shows used to be a big thing, apparently. They're full of horrifying masked aberrations that seem designed to give bitter parents a means of ruining their children's Christmas. And Santa Claus is no different in that respect. We dogs don't like good little girls! But it's more entertaining than most, and we learn what Mexico's international stereotypes looked like at the time. It seems the Caribbean is a land of white children armed with rifles and maracas. <laughs> Here it comes. The problem with top tening this subject is anyone with a passing interest in it will guess at least the top two before we get there. What did you say this movie was about? Oh, it's great. It's about this guy who dresses up like Santa Claus and kills people. What? You probably know all about Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. Or at least that this happens. Garbage day! Huh? No! Ah! But unless you're a dedicated supporter of this channel, you might not know how naughty it is. She was naughty. 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 You are being very, very naughty. Naughty this. Very naughty. What's wrong? Are we going to be all right? No, Willie. Gramps is a Nazi. And so Elves follows Silent Night, Deadly Night 2 as inevitably as bewilderment follows this. I'm not a pervert. I like seeing naked girls. I'm your f***ing sister! Yeah, and you've got f***ing big tits, and I'm going to tell everybody I saw them. The ultimate good-bad Christmas movie stars Dan Haggerty as cuddly former drunk former cop Mike McGavin, or sometimes Eddie McGavin who stumbles on a Nazi Algenics plot while working as a store Santa. I impregnated my own daughter to produce an offspring that would be suitable to the elf. The script from director Jeff Mandel, who was also responsible for the incomprehensible Cyber Sheik, is one of the finest ever brought to the screen. You and your damn elves, I'm sick of it! And when combined with Haggerty's performance, the effect can be mesmerizing. Who in the hell are you? What are you, a goddamn Nazi or something? Is that elf yours? How he made a career at this is unfathomable, but for once he isn't the worst actor in the movie. That honour goes to Alan Lee, hey, yes. who, like much of the cast, never worked again. There was a group that believed in elves that did one hell of a lot of killing. The Nazis. The Nazis. Mm -hmm. If you could ignore their brutality, you'd have to say they were just a bunch of crackpots. This is one of the most entertaining bad movies you could hope to come across. Each new scene bringing fresh wonders and posing unexpected questions. I want to know the connection between the elves and the Nazis. The elf mates with a virgin on Christmas Eve to produce the master race, and it will eventually rule the world. So that's it. We've made it to the end and dodged at least a few of the obvious booby traps. In fact, I didn't even mention the Star Wars Holiday Special. Oh, shit. Joy to the world, the Lord. Let her